Our investigation begins with a mysterious envelope found in this city-owned Crown Victoria. Inside the envelope, two photographs of scantily clad women. As you're about to hear, one of the women in this picture, an exotic dancer, was murdered. And when the problem solvers investigated, we found some curious connections to Kwame Kilpatrick, his longtime friend, and his cousin's barber shop on Dexter. How does it all tie together? Keep watching. On May 15th of 2000, a young couple was gunned down at this home on Stopel Street in Detroit. The victims were Shannon Smith, an exotic dancer, and her boyfriend, Darrell Colvin, a barber. Two murders in a city that has hundreds every year. What piqued our interest about these cases is that each of the victims has some connection to Kilpatrick and his entourage. Take a close look at this picture. That's Shannon Smith, second from the right. The snapshot was found in this city-owned car that was assigned to Kilpatrick friend and appointee, Derek Miller. The pictures were found five years after Shannon and her boyfriend were murdered, five years later. I don't know what to think of that. It's odd, isn't it? Real odd. And it's scary. Shannon Smith's boyfriend, Darrell Colvin, also has a Kilpatrick connection. According to his father, Colvin cut the mayor's hair and worked at Kilpatrick's cousin's barbershop. Police suspect the murders of Smith and Colvin were drug related. We never understood it. Quite frankly, we never believed anything the police told us because it didn't add up. Detroit is a violent city. Let's face it, a lot of people know somebody who's been murdered. It doesn't mean they were involved in the murder or even know anything about it. These grieving parents are certainly curious about the Kilpatrick connection, and they feel like they got the brush off from police. It was like it didn't even happen. You know, like her death was so insignificant. 21 years old, she didn't deserve that. I came across these cases while investigating the murder of another stripper, Tamara Green. She's been linked to Kilpatrick by rumors of a wild party at the Manugian mansion. Now, another unsolved murder of a stripper. On Mother's Day morning, 2000, Shannon Smith stopped by her mom's house with a gift. I know she was in a good mood and you know, we were talking about what was going to happen later on that day, and she said she had some other things for me, and she'd be back later on that day. But the girl she called Missy never came back. The next afternoon, a relative called. Shannon's house was circled in yellow police tape. Somebody was coming down the step, an investigator, and I said that uh, that's your daughter. She was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Shannon Smith and her boyfriend, Darrell Colvin, were both shot to death. There was no sign of forced entry. The little girl that witnessed it said the guy went in and he came out. And she said she heard my, my son said, man, you don't have to do this. Just before the murder, Darrell Colvin had boasted to Shannon Smith's brother that he was expecting a big shipment of pot from Arizona. But Colvin was also known to exaggerate. Just knowing him, I don't think he was involved in that lifestyle. Just knowing him. You know, I don't think he didn't have a personality, the charisma to do that. Colvin's parents say he worked six days a week cutting hair and didn't have a flashy lifestyle. You don't believe that Darrell was involved in any big time drug dealing? Absolutely not. No. No, no, no. Colvin's parents are now wondering who was the main target. I think Shannon. Why? I have no idea. The investigation into the murders of Shannon Smith and Darrell Colvin quickly went cold. Now the problem solvers are bringing the case back to the forefront. All because of a picture of Shannon Smith found in a most unusual place five years after she and her boyfriend were gunned down. I was uh, given the job assignment to uh, clean out a vehicle. On August 23rd, 2005, Gail Schaefer was working as a mechanic at this city garage. She was told to clean out this Crown Vic turned in by a Kilpatrick appointee. She noticed the car was littered with empty cognac bottles like these. Then she found this envelope stuck between the front seats. Inside were two pictures of scantily clad women. The pictures that I seen um, kind of scared me because um, I heard about the rumor prior to the Manugan Mansion and uh, these women would look like dancers. Gail snapped pictures of the Crown Vic with her cell phone. Then she called a police officer she knew named Tony Davis. Davis was a former Kilpatrick bodyguard and he knew everybody in his inner circle. 
Davis and Schaefer found paperwork in the Crown Vic indicating it was assigned to Kilpatrick's longtime friend, Derek Miller. As I made a comment to her that this guy works for the mayor and he's at the top. Remember, Officer Davis was a former Kilpatrick bodyguard. He wondered if the pictures had something to do with that long rumored Manoogian Mansion party. So he decided to hang on to them. A couple years down the road, they came in handy. In June of this year, Officer Davis filed a lawsuit against Kwame Kilpatrick. He claimed he'd been harassed on the job to keep him quiet about Kilpatrick's womanizing. Among the many incidents detailed in his suit was the discovery of the racy photos in the city-owned Crown Vic. When I reported on the Davis suit, I showed the pictures on TV and asked viewers to help identify these women. That's when I heard from Shannon Smith's family and learned she'd been murdered. I found out this picture was taken in the VIP lounge of a strip club called Bear Facts. So how did it wind up in a car used by Derek Miller? I contacted Miller and asked him to sit down and talk. He decided to speak through his lawyer, David Dumichel. Dumichel sent me this paperwork indicating Miller turned the car in a month before Gail Schaefer found the pictures. According to Dumichel, the Crown Vic was put into a loaner pool when Miller turned it in. He says Miller has no idea who drove the car after that. He says Miller cleaned everything out before he turned the car in. He says the pictures have nothing to do with Miller and he doesn't know any of the women in the photographs. Darrell was loved by everybody, so I don't know why somebody would want to kill him. When I tracked down Darrell Colvin's parents, I was surprised to learn their son once cut Kwame Kilpatrick's hair. Even more surprised to hear he worked at Ali's Barbershop, owned by the mayor's cousin, Abdullah Ali. Are you Ali? I heard that. Are you Ali? I'm Mr. Ali. I'd been there before in 2003 investigating this snapshot of Kwame Kilpatrick posing with a drug dealer named Eric Jones. Cops found the picture on Jones' fireplace mantle during a drug raid. The picture was taken in the mayor's cousin's barber shop. Three years after that conversation, the mayor's cousin was arrested for drugs at the barber shop and later convicted. Darrell Colvin's dad says he was never comfortable about his son working at Ali's. Uh, I just didn't like the clientele. I didn't like the, uh, the area. Um, it just didn't seem like the right place for him to be working at the time. Colvin says his son left the barbershop after a disagreement with Ali. A couple months later, he and his girlfriend were murdered. Why did it happen? Was Darrell Colvin involved with drugs? Could there be a connection to the mayor's cousin's barbershop? Is it possible Shannon Smith was the target? How did the photos wind up in this city car? Do the victim's connections to the ex-mayor and his entourage have any significance? A lot of questions these families would like answered. It's old but somebody out there must know something. I think it would bring a little closure to the family and give us a little peace. If anyone knows anything, just help us out. You know, we, we, 